welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be making a scrub cap and I'm going to kind of show you how I do that. It doesn't take any like fancy sewing skills in order to make one. They're pretty simple in general. So I just figured I would give it a shot and try to make my own. This is one I've made in the past. I just happen to have some scrap fabric. So this is actually the one I wore on Valentine's Day. We had our sealant clinic where all the kids came and we were able to put sealants on their teeth for free, um, which is always a good time. They like the hearts a lot, so um, that was fun. However, the downside of this one, it's kind of open in the back these are really more like the men's style. So when I'm in clinic, I usually have my hair on the low bun. And the cap I'm going to make today is going to have a piece of fabric that covers that bun as well, which is really what um, is ideal and what you need. So I don't have a pattern. What I do have is this, which is a disposable cap that is in the style that I want to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably take some pictures for reference of this. Then I'm going to unsew it make a pattern based off of these pieces, and then sew it all together. I have my phone set up here as a second camera so you can see kind of close up what I'm doing. Cause I know from where you are here, it's a little it's a little far off. So materials I'm using for today are this disposable scrub cap to make a pattern from. I also have some butcher paper here, which I will be using to cut my pattern out of. My paper just happens to be covered in oral pathology notes, but that is not a requirement. Next thing you need is fabric. This one I just went to Joann's and picked out um, a half a yard of black fabric. I like this one because it was pretty neutral, but it does have some fun sparkles in it. So I thought that was cute. To trace my pattern, I have a pencil and eraser to pin it onto the paper. We'll need some pins. You're also gonna need a couple pair of scissors. I have one for cutting paper and I have one for cutting fabric. Paper will dull your scissors and you need them really, really sharp for fabric. So these are your, gonna be your really sharp pair. These are gonna be your just like everyday scissors. And last but not least, what I will be using is a sewing machine. It's gonna make your life a lot easier if you have one. Although if you really wanted to hand sew it, it would just take a little bit longer and it's not that hard. All right, so first things first, I'm going to take my disposable cap and take it apart and make my pattern. So this has, um, so as you can see, there's little stitches all through here that hold it together and I'm just going to um, take those out. And I don't have a seam ripper, which is the tool that you'd ideally use for this. So I'm going to cut a tiny little snippet of the thread. Um, just anywhere to get started. There we go. And I'm gonna start pulling out with a needle. This is probably the most tedious part of the whole thing. Ah, yes, wow, okay. <clears throat> I finally got the cap taken apart and that took way longer than I thought it would. Hopefully that is the most labor intensive part of this whole thing and if you're making your own then hopefully you won't even need to do that in the first place. So um, maybe I've done all of the grunt work for us both. So, <clears throat> all right, next step <clears throat> is to take all my butcher paper here. So I have the three pieces. I have this part that goes around um, the back, <laughs> this part that goes around the head and um, covers the ponytail. This is the very top of the hat. And then this bit here, um, which I will probably use a ribbon for that I don't own yet. So I'm gonna have to go um, buy, measure this and see um, how long of a ribbon I need because the one I thought I may be able to use um, is too short. I could just take some fabric and sew it into this a little bit, but mm, no, I think I might do a ribbon. Okay, so that will be later. Um, in the meantime, let's see. So I've got my butcher paper here, and actually I don't know if it's gonna be long enough. I'm gonna have to get a different butcher paper. So, yep, too short. Okay. So benign salivary gland tumor poster. Um, it's not gonna work for this one. Let's see, I think I have another one that mm, this might be smaller, actually. Wait, have another one? But wait, there's more. I had like a whole wall of um, oral pathology. These are all gonna be too small. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take my soft tissue tumor paper and tape it together with, let me move my chair out of the way, 
so I can stand and have my really fancy wasn't planning on trying my pants, but these are from high school and they've always been like five sizes too big. So um, please ignore them. I'm gonna take my soft tissue tumors paper and my benign salivary gland tumors paper and I'm gonna tape those together. Oh man, I need a bigger table. Ooh. Okay, one more please. All right, I've got my tape. Let's just secure these. Together and make one big piece so I can actually I don't need this at all. Why? Yeah, no, I don't need this. Okay, so what I was what I was gonna do is trace the blue pieces onto these and turn make this my pattern, but what, why, why bother that? I took these, oh my gosh. Okay. Posters, unnecessary. So, I'm just gonna use these as my pattern. I don't know why I didn't just do that to begin with. Okay, so I have my half a yard of fabric and I'm going to lay it out. So I'm taking my blue piece and I am laying it out here. Let me tilt you down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna pin this to this all around very securely so it doesn't move and then I'm gonna trim it, cut it out and do that with the rest of the pieces as well before I'm able to put them together. I got my fabric pieces I'm using all cut out. Now I'm going to detach the pattern and pin it together where I want to sew it. Okay, so everything is inside out right now. And that way the, the seams will be hidden, but I have the top of the cap attached to the side of the cap. And so I'm gonna do my first round of sewing. I'm gonna pull my machine over and get started on that. Okay. All right, let's see how that looks so far. I'm gonna cut off these extra strings. Okay. All right. Oh no. Accidentally, <laughs> accidentally folded over some of the fabric there. I had to cut out that little bit and restitch this part. It's like four little stitches that caught an extra fold of fabric. Darn. Darn, darn, darn. The only thing tricky about this hat is about these caps is that they are, since you're making something for your head, it is quite curvy. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a challenge when you are sewing. So I just popped out that little bit and I'm gonna restitch that section. Okay, that should be fixed. <laughs> Again, I am not any kind of expert seamstress. I have very, very basic skills. So uh, yeah, this is a learning process for all of us. Learning process for all of us. But the rest of it, I think, looks good. Looks pretty good. Okay, now I just need to fold over the bottom and make a little and make this look nice and neat, and also a little space for the ribbon to run through here. So I'm gonna shut this off and move it out of the way a little bit. And... All right, so the next step I need to do is to make a little slit where I want the ribbon to come out the side. 
which is essentially a buttonhole, but I don't have a buttonhole foot for this machine, I think. So you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm sure I have it marked on there where I want to do the little slot so I don't lose the orientation here. And I'm not gonna lie, this is uh, more challenging than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> All right, so there's one little rectangle. Yeah, there's definitely easier ways to do this if you have the right pedal for this. I might decide later that this looks ridiculous and, you know, should have opted for a different method. But for now, it's going to work just fine. Okay, I've already got my section marked here. Let me make sure they still line up after I actually stitched one. And actually, oh, it's a little off, actually. A little off. I'm going to do it here. And just... okay. Okay, got slot number two done and done. Now, the last step that I can do today is to finish this hem just around the whole thing that will keep the little ribbon drawstring in place. So this here is going to be the little slit that the drawstring comes through. So I'm going to um, get that where I can cut just the layer that I want to. Get my fabric scissors and a little snip there. So I can get through. And the point of having the the point of having the thread here is that so it doesn't fray so much later. And once I, get, I um, wash it and I'm really using it, it won't start fraying. So, second side. I don't actually have a ribbon yet that I'm going to use for this. I need to run to the store and pick one up. But just to test it out and see what it's going to look like, I'm going to use this one that I pulled from the disposable one and run it through and see how that looks. So um, the way you do this is you're going to need a safety pin, the biggest one possible really, but this is just the closest one, so this is what I'm going to use. And then you're going to pin, just kind of I'm gonna make that a little thicker and attach this onto the end there. All this does is give you a little piece to hold on to. So I'm going to run this through the back of the cap, and this just helps to pull it along, just kind of scrunch it up, get a hold of the safety pin, and then pull it through. And do that over and over again until you get to the other side. All right, so now that you have that out the other side, just kind of, kind of tug on it till they're pretty even. Here we go. Remove the safety pin. And voila, we have a cap. So let's try it on and see if it fits. All right, so there we are. Fully made, it covers my little ponytail here. And I can let my hair get a little bit longer and it'll still have plenty of space. Got a little bit of a kind of a wave in the seam there, but overall I think it's pretty cute. And once I get a black ribbon or maybe a sparkly ribbon to put in, in place of this disposable one, that will be perfect. All right, so I hope this helps if you're thinking about making your own scrub caps. The simple ones without the ponytail pouch are much, much more straightforward, but if you're thinking about doing this one too, like I did, it was a little more challenging than I anticipated, but it really wasn't bad. I mean, you saw me, this was my first attempt ever at this particular style, so it's doable even with very minimal sewing skills. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video interesting or useful, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna know what life is like in dental school, then make sure you subscribe. I do put out videos about once a week. You guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.